A few years ago, I developed a sort of weird obsession towards talk shows. I'm not sure why this happened, I didn't have any previous emotional attachment to this kind of stuff. I'm not American, so I didn't grow up sitting on the couch with my family watching, I don't know, David Letterman late at night. No, but for some odd reason, it just took over my life for a couple of weeks. I kept watching really old clips of old talk shows and doing things like comparing in my head interview styles of people back then compared to now, like an absolute nerd. And you know what? It seems as if I wasn't alone in this sort of obsession. Because over the years, I've seen so many YouTubers try to tackle the talk show format to varying degrees of success. One of the most recent examples I can think of is obviously Lily Singh, who actually did it for real. But guess what? That show just got cancelled. Kind of unfortunate, since I thought the second season wasn't all that bad, but oh well, it is what it is. At some point, Goddamn, Fred had his own made-up talk show on his channel. David Dobrik's podcast, Views, is set in the exact same way as a talk show. And the latest person to join this ever-growing list of talk show-obsessed YouTubers is none other than David Dobrik's friend, Jason Nash. If you don't know who Jason Nash is, he's a man who's two years younger than my parents, and he's mainly known for... I guess nowadays, just being David Dobrik's friend. I, I don't know how else I can describe him. He's just this guy, used to be a comedian, I think he was also in a bunch of movies, who's in David Dobrik's very popular vlogs. He sometimes wears a bunch of wacky costumes, and yeah, th they're pretty close. Now I should point out that I have a few biases that kinda work in Jason's favor before talking about this talk show. One is the fact that I barely know anything about all this recent drama that Jason and David have gotten themselves involved in. I know it's bad, but that's essentially it. Honestly, feel free to inform me all about it in the comments. And two, I really liked watching David Dobrik's vlogs for like the longest time. And you'd notice that Jason takes a pretty big part in those. So because of all of that, I think you should really trust me when I tell you that this new talk show of his really, really stinks. This show is one of the stinkiest things I've seen in a very long time. Oh, oh, oh. That's good, Larry. Oh, Thank you. Oh, 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 what a beautiful day. The beautiful day. It's just this big, huge disaster, as he so adequately states himself in the title of his own video. It's just so hard to watch. From what I can tell, this whole thing was produced by a company called Triller, or just a TikTok ripoff. I think. And really, just from the first glance that you might take while looking at this video, you can tell that they did not put any love or care to this show. They're essentially just sitting in a room made out of cardboard. And it looks so, so bad. Look at this. Look at the ceiling peeping out like that from the top. Why is that in frame? Or look at the right bit, where the set just ends and you can kind of see a white wall. They were so lazy. They didn't even care enough about this show to maybe just zoom in a little bit. And fun fact, this was actually shot in David Dobrik's old bedroom, which I don't know why, uh, but it feels a bit sad. But listen, Pinely, this is the thing. This show, it, it ain't your regular talk show. It ain't your dad's talk show. No, this, this right here is a funny talk show, has a lot of gags and jokes. Jason Nash is a comedian after all, so maybe the fact that this set looks so trashy is just part of the joke. It's intentional. Well, even if that's the case, it doesn't look bad enough to be funny. You don't look at this and start laughing, you just kind of think to yourself, huh, that's kind of crap. By the way, today's video is sponsored by you? Maybe? Listen, my last video got copyright claimed. I don't upload a lot, so that was really my rent money for that month. Kinda sucks, but whatever. This has happened to me so many times by now, I figured I might as well just start a Patreon, just so I can worry less about this kind of stuff, and feel like I can take the time I want to take to make the kind of videos that I, I want to make. I'm gonna do a bunch of raffles where I draw stuff for you guys, and a whole bunch of other cool stuff like that, but it's mainly just a way for you to support the channel, if that's something that you want to do. On this first episode of The Jason Nash Show, we meet my band leader Larry, do some monologue jokes, try some instant karma, check in with an animal expert, and talk to Nina Daniel about hot topics. You might read this description and think by mistake that this episode is gonna be quite long because of the sheer amount of stuff that I just listed. But it's actually kind of short. It's only nine minutes long. He just goes through all these things really, really quickly. He doesn't give any of them a lot of time. Watching this episode, the first thing that popped into my head is, damn, 
This is just like the Eric Andre show. Well, it's not really exactly the same, because it's not as good or funny. But it's very much trying to be. And the Jordan Nash Show! It's Jason. It's Jason. If you haven't seen The Eric Andre Show, it's a talk show hosted and created by Eric Andre. And it's just the most chaotic and crazy thing ever, but in the best kind of way. And Jason's show really tries to imitate that. Eric always has a very weird band playing for him. Sometimes it has a bunch of old people and stuff. And also, he has Hannibal Burris, his talk show sidekick. Well, had, who stands there next to the guest, and it's just being funny. Jason, on the other hand, has Larry, who kind of takes on all of these roles in a way. I mean, Christ, he very much looks like he could be a part of Eric's band. In terms of being a sidekick, though, he's just kind of like there all the time. He maybe plays a ukulele every now and again. I, I like him. Props to him. He's really carrying that show. Then you got the whole vibe of the episode. It tries to be awkward, uncomfortable, chaotic, and funny like the Eric Andre show, but it mainly just succeeds in doing the first two. Good job. Good job, Larry. Anyway, the main words that popped into my head when watching this first episode are artificial chaos or manufactured chaos. Nothing here is real or authentic in any way. They're just sort of pretending to do crazy stuff. There's a very scripted bit where after explaining about this subreddit called Instant Karma, Jason goes out to the street to talk to some guy. He asks him about his opinion on some important topic. The guy doesn't really care about anything that Jason has to say. And then he gets hit by a car. But because it feels so scripted and the guy's not a great actor... Uh, I'm not too familiar about that, I'm sorry. You end up just saying, who cares? It's just a mediocre sketch. So, you know, whatever. How does this compare to what Eric does when he's outside, when he's popping out of a salad stand dressed as a salad man, like a maniac? You gotta give me a reason to watch your show. I'm not saying that he should do everything that Eric does, obviously not. But because the feeling of the show is already so similar, you can't help but make these sort of comparisons. It's just kind of lame, but not as lame as... Jason Nash started his very successful career as a YouTuber after David Dobrik watched him perform his set at a comedy club. David thought that Jason was so funny that he should include him in his vlogs. And hey, I'm not gonna take that away from him. I have laughed many a time from Jason Nash moments in these videos. That being said, let's check out this opening monologue of the first episode. An NFT by the artist Beeple recently sold for $69 million and shows what the artist did every day for the last 13 years. I had a similar piece that was on sale, but nobody wanted to buy 5,000 paintings of me crying in the shower. Oh, his phone's ringing and that's actually ranking. Wow, it's pretty exciting. A new report says two weeks after your first Moderna or Pfizer vaccine will make you 80% immune to COVID. It also makes you 80% more likely to brag about it on Instagram. All right, guys, those are the jokes. Uh, th we'll try to make them better next week. One These were two jokes. It was just two jokes. How lazy is this guy? It treads this sort of line where if you say that the jokes are bad, Jason could say, Oh no, that's the point, they're ironic. But if you say that the jokes are good, which, nah. But if you were to say that, Jason would definitely take that compliment. It's odd, because I think I've seen Jason being funny a lot of times in the past. I'm sure that he could do a better opening monologue than whatever this is. But he just radiates this vibe that he doesn't even feel like doing this. That he'd just rather be in bed right now. Right after that, we get to see the first guest. Ooh, exciting. Who's one of those animal guys, an animal wrangler. I thought this could be interesting. I could maybe get to see some cool animals that I haven't seen ever in my life. But no, this guy's just a YouTuber that's playing an animal wrangler. Boring. Who cares? I'm not even gonna talk about this segment. Screw this segment. Nothing happens. He didn't bring one animal. He's just eating a sandwich or something. I'm sure this YouTuber is alright, but this segment didn't deserve the title card that I made for it. Maybe I would have cared more if he brought in some freshly squeezed orange juice, which I love, but that's not the case. So let's move on. I think that one of the things that the Eric Andre show is maybe mostly known for is the guest interviews. They're really something special. He would bring onto his show a poor, unsuspecting celebrity thinking that they're gonna promote their new movie or something. But instead, they just enter hell. 
essentially. You can see that from the very first second, the guest realizes that this is gonna be a very different experience. The door that they need to go through is always really hard to open up, the studio is always heated up to the max, so that room literally does feel like hell when you enter it. The chair that the guests are sitting on is purposefully very, very uncomfortable, has a bunch of lumps, which causes them to, to always feel like they're on edge. And then the actual interview kicks in, and it's just mayhem, just pure, pure mayhem. A goddamn doppelganger of the person being interviewed would show up, a man would suddenly erupt out of the floor underneath the guest, trying to touch them. There would be cockroaches and snakes popping out of nowhere. Again, just pure, pure mayhem. And that's what makes the Eric Andre show so unique compared to everything else. It would be really hard to do a show like this without the mind of someone who is just as much of a lunatic as Eric Andre. Let's see how well does Jason Nash compare to that. Are his interviews as exciting? Let's see. So towards the end of the episode, we got to see a guest, a real guest, that is gonna be on the show without a script, I, I think. I'm not sure if that bit is scripted or planned in advance or not. I'll tell you why in a bit. Anyways, uh, when she enters the room, they literally copy the door gag from Eric's show. Please welcome Nina Daniel. Nina. <sighs> Hi. I thought she was coming in from over here. What's the point of doing that? It's so blatant as well. There's no way for you to deny that you're copying the guy when you're repeating that specific of a gag. Anyways, she comes in, they, they talk about a bunch of boring nonsense for like a second and a half, and then Mr. Nash suggests that they play a little game. He's like the, the saw guy. Basically, uh, I will state a topic, choose a side, and then the other person's gonna have to defend the side I didn't choose. Okay, the world, is it round or flat? I say it's round. Um, it's, it's flat because... So just so I get this straight for a second, the game that Jason's doing here is literally just him being like, Hey! Hey, hey you! Say something really stupid right now! This is a game, you gotta do what I tell you. So she says the, the stupid thing that he essentially commanded her to say, and then he's like, Ha! Gotcha! You just said something stupid, you, you dumbass! I got you good! You've just been gnashed. Hey, I don't know if you want. I don't even want to publicly say that the world is flat. No, not I'm, I'm not. I was, I was just playing the devil's advocate. I was trying to participate in the. No, that's like straight up something that a little kid would do. <laughs> and then after that, she just kind of storms out of the set, and that's it. She, she just leaves, which is essentially the part that really makes me believe that even this lame-ass interview is orchestrated in some way or another. Because, come on, l let's be real for a second. It's not like anything outrageous just happened. I think this is the tamest prank ever pulled of all time. Not really something to storm out of a place for, that's for sure. It might even make me stay in a place for a little longer, because I'll be so confused. I'll be like, what? What do you want from me? What is this for? What are you trying to do? Who knows? Maybe it isn't faked. Maybe she just figured that she has better things to do with her day than to sit there while a grown-ass man tries to pull the tamest, lamest prank in the world on her. Who knows? Let me know in the comments. Fake or not fake? I genuinely want to know what you guys think. What I can tell you for a fact is that this is definitely a lot less interesting than the interviews that Eric does. But I'm nice, so I'm gonna give you some constructive criticism. Here's what I think could be done with this show. Now, what I'm gonna say now could sound a little bit mean, but I think you gotta just scrap this whole format, man. Just throw it away. It's trying too much to be something that already exists. And like I said earlier, if you can't offer anything that's better or different than what you're taking inspiration from, why would anyone watch your show? Keep Larry though, he's he's pretty great. He seems like a very lovely man. Now if you do have a fake talk show like that, that from what we deducted is potentially fully scripted or, or maybe just fully planned out, I think you can let your imagination run a bit more wild than whatever we've seen here. You can dream a little bit bigger, I I'm gonna allow it. Either way, let me know what you think about this. Do you think this show has any potential? Do you not? Uh, like the video, like I like you, subscribe to my channel, check out my fucking Patreon in the description, and yeah, eat your vegetables. Goodbye.